Alrighty team, welcome back to Kin Stretch this week. Let's get ready to rock and roll. Uh, we'll be jumping right in today. I am excited about this class because I'll be introducing not necessarily new concepts, uh, but some new training for some stuff that is making a really big deal for me in my own practice right now, which is training for the fingers and the hands and then the wrists and the elbows. So Rachel and I recently took up climbing we are, uh, well, I won't speak for Rachel, but I'll speak for myself. I'm not very good. Um, I am, I guess, kind of this like, you know, big looking dude who doesn't really move that well on the wall yet. Um, but it's an awesome physical challenge, awesome mental challenge, but with it comes uh, some, some issues, issues in the fingers, issues in the hand, the wrist and the elbows. So I've been experimenting with some stuff to address that, that I'm excited to show you guys. I think that this has ramifications and, and applications to all sorts of different sports. So I know we have a few folks on here who are uh, bikers, who ride mountain bikes, folks who play baseball and play wiffle ball, uh, and then folks who are just trying to live their everyday life and feel better. And yet no one, at least that I've encountered, ever talks to you about training your fingers and your hands. So we're going to explore that today after we get through some of our four knots work. Uh, today will mostly be focused on the hips. Uh, I'm going to return to 90-90 today and, uh, and we'll do some training there and then we'll do some training in straddle as well. Uh, and then at the end, you can take a, not the end, but towards the second half, you could take a seated position that works for you, whether that's kneeling or 90-90 or something like that, or you could continue to get a, a good stretch and straddle. Uh, while we work on the hands and wrists uh, and elbows. So really excited to share that with you. Today is potentially kind of a, um, uh, a full inventory in terms of tools that you may want to have on hand. Um, you'll definitely want a yoga block. You'll definitely want a dowel uh, or a small stick. The shorter and the lighter, the better. So, uh, you know, broomsticks are great, but just make sure it's light. Tennis balls will be great to have just for extra tension, but aren't required. And then uh, towels will be great. I, I am in straddle going to use these. Uh, these are furniture sliders. If you don't have a furniture slider, something that can work similarly is uh, just like a plastic plate, something that you can put your foot on that will move across carpet or across the floor. Uh, if you're on carpet, you definitely want this. If you are uh, training on a hardwood floor with a yoga mat, you can probably get away with um, like a sock or a towel under your foot, all right? Um, and then the last thing is I'm gonna use kettlebells to create some wedging. When we get into straddle, you could use small weights or you can also use furniture for that. So uh, <laughs> full inventory, but the only stuff you wanna have is the yoga block and the dowel. So. Uh, let's go ahead and get started with cars from the standing position today. And uh, then we'll get down onto the floor in 90-90. All right. So I'm just going to adjust this a little bit so I don't have a big loop sticking out. And uh, <clears throat> let's begin. Take the balls at your side. Squeeze the floor with your toes. Start to build a little tension in your feet, tension in your legs, in your butt, in your abs. Imagine a string is pulling the top of your head up and away from your feet and keep all that tension around 20% effort. And then let's begin with the neck. Bringing chin to chest, looking to the right armpit, leaning the right ear back, to the right back pocket. Eyes and nose look straight up. Look over to the left shoulder, towards the left armpit, down to center reverse. Look to left armpit, left ear back. Eyes up to the ceiling. Look over to the right shoulder, right armpit, and down to center reverse. Look right, right ear back. Eyes and nose up, look over to the left shoulder, left armpit, down to center, reverse. And one more. 
still 20% effort throughout the rest of your body and reverse. Very good, arms across the chest. Let's now go to mid back uh, or T-spine cars, thoracic spine. You're going to bring those elbows and this cross, this is kind of the target where your arms cross, all right? So think about where that's pointing. Let's point that cross down towards your feet. You're kind of hunched over and then rotate that cross over towards the right foot. Then lean back, lean that right shoulder back towards the right back pocket. Rotate that cross up to the ceiling, over towards the, the left wall perhaps. And then you're gonna aim it down towards the left foot and to center, all right? So you're kind of making this circle with this cross. It's like uh, out over to the wall, up to the ceiling, over to the other wall, down to center, okay? So let's reverse, cross to left foot, left shoulder to back left pocket, send that center of your chest up to the ceiling, over to the right wall, and down towards the right foot, and number two. Sometimes I know that you guys are just watching what I'm doing, right? So maybe if I uh, start to smooth this motion out, you can also mimic what I'm doing without the cueing itself, which may then the next time around allow you to better understand what the cues are. Very good. Next, the shoulder blades. Tennis balls at your sides and a little bit of tension everywhere. Shrug the shoulders, roll forward, unshrug, roll back. Shrug, roll forward, unshrug, back. Shrug, forward, unshrug, back. Reverse, forward, shrug, back, unshrug, forward. Shrug, back, unshrug, forward, shrug, back, unshrug. Right arm comes across the midline to the overhead position. Internal rotation from here. So ball rotates forward, rotates out. Continue to take the shoulder with the ball. And when you come down here, thumb is back behind you, ball is pointed out to the wall, okay? So we're in internal rotation here. Reach back, externally rotate. We'll go over what that looks like and what that feels like in just a second. And rep number two. Come across the midline, bicep grazes cheek as you reach overhead. Internal rotation is, uh, if you take your thumb off the ball, turn your thumb in towards your head, Keep turning it forward as much as you can. You're now in internal rotation. Reach back. Try to keep twisting to point your thumb to the back wall. All right. Now, as you go back from here, reach straight back. Thumb turns in towards you and down to the ground and out. All right. So I don't want to get too much into directional uh, descriptions such as clockwise or counterclockwise because it's going to be different on both arms. It'll be opposite, I guess. So the best thing for you to do is listen to that cueing, understand what internal rotation is. So if I take my left arm up like this, internal rotation is like that. External rotation is like that. All right. If you put your arm at your side, internal rotation towards the midline external rotation away. But the quicker you can understand, at least for the hip and shoulder, internal and external rotation, just e the, the easier the motions are going to become because you'll know exactly what, what to be doing. So left arm across the midline, graze cheek, overhead position, internal rotation, reach back towards the wall, come down to meet your thigh, reverse. And number two, across midline, bicep grazes cheek, overhead position, 
thumb turns in towards your head and forward. Keep twisting in that same direction as you come down to meet the thigh in internal rotation. Reverse, reach back. Externally rotate. Come up to overhead, across and down. And I think one more. And reverse. All righty, next, elbows. Palms are, uh, or rather the ball is facing forward, so palms are up. Bend the elbow, turn the palm away, extend, light squeeze on the tennis balls, two, palms up, bend, palms away, extend. Now keep the palms pointed down, bend, turn, Extend, turn, bend, turn, extend. Last one, bend, turn, extend, down. Very good. For the wrist, uh, set one ball aside. Circles at the wrist here. Let's, uh, we'll just go normal, uh, easy setup, palm up. So palm is up, grab onto your right forearm. Take the right knuckles down to the floor, over and up. We're going clockwise here, down to the floor, over to the left, up, over to the right. One more, Whew. wrists, always tough. Squeeze that tennis ball, two, and last one counterclockwise, and the other side. We'll go uh, down, so counterclockwise first, up to the top, out to the left, down, right, up, left. One more. And reverse. Very good. Next, the hip. If you can, try to do the hip freestanding. If not, grab uh, a piece of furniture or grab your towel. Otherwise, <clears throat> you can go out to the side, out to the front. <laughs> you could go behind you or, or overhead, whatever you want. I'm gonna just try out to the side. So let's start with the right foot or right hip rather. So right foot over left. Keep that foot to the inside as you hike the knee up. You'll notice that brings me into external rotation, okay? So if my foot is in line with my knee, I'm sort of neutral in the hip, whereas if I bring it across and bring the knee up, my hip is in external rotation to start. So we're just expressing a larger amount of motion. Open out to the side, reach the foot back, bring the knee down and around to meet the other knee. Reverse, out to the side, foot drops under and leads the way back. Let's go left side, left over right, lift the knee, open, internal rotation, reach back, reverse. Whew, really hard to hold my arms out for that long. Um, <laughs> ridiculous. Let's try arms across the chest still squeezing hard on the tennis balls, all right? Right foot over left, flex the hip, abduct, abduct the hip, internally rotate and extend and come down to meet the knee. Reverse, extend, abduct, externally rotate that foot underneath and come across and down. Number two on the left, this is a good balance challenge, actually. And three on the right. Much, whew, much easier than holding my arms out to the side, <laughs> which is quite sad. Uh, here we go, third on the left.
Very good. Knees and ankles, let's go ahead and do seated on the floor. Sometimes a little bit easier to do them down here. You can do them standing, but <clears throat> for the knees, now this is actually a place uh, where the slider can come in handy. You don't have to do this, um, but if you want, you can try it. If not, just keep your foot off the ground and, uh, and do the knee cars like we normally would. Um, but here, you can externally rotate the tibia, let it slide out, internally rotate, bring it back. So this is just a way of getting access to the knee cars without actually having to um, support this limb in space on its own. Really, I, I wouldn't necessarily say much safer, but much more accessible and just make sure you don't straighten the leg out all the way. All right, so now let's start uh, internally rotated, extend slightly, externally rotate, bend, internally rotate, extend, externally rotate, bend, one more, internal, extend, external, bend. Pick that whole limb up, circle with the foot, and reverse, five, very good. And the other side, hopefully I have enough room here. Same thing as before, externally rotate tibia, extend slightly, internally rotate, bend, externally rotate, extend, internally rotate, bend. One more, external, extend, internal bend keep it rotated in reach out externally rotate bend now remember you're pivoting okay so if you haven't practiced that enough just feel free to keep it right where it is internal rotation extend external rotation bend internal extend external bend and the ankle four, five, always good to get extra on the ankle. All righty. So let's begin with 90-90, uh, working on our standard four knots practice, uh, working on the hips, <clears throat> other two knots being the shoulders. So let's jump right into it. You can start in the butterfly position. If uh, getting into 90-90, getting your knees on the ground is difficult, you can uh, set yourself up on the arm of a chair or the arm of a couch. That's one way to get into the position. You could also sit in a chair and try to set up uh, the, the first leg we're gonna work on either across your lap or uh, bring another chair in close and you can sort of stick it on that chair and just let your other leg hang off, okay? So there's a few options, uh, explore that. I'm going to be working from the 90-90 base position today, uh, but you don't have to do what I do to get the same feeling and the same stimulus, okay? So uh, in butterfly, let's take the right leg, pick it up off the floor, open it out, and get a 90 degree at your angle that's gonna open this whole leg. Then, kind of anchor on that, you can lift up this other leg, swing the foot under, and now try to put the knee down where your feet were, and you'll be in roughly the 90-90 position. Now from here, you can make adjustments. Um, we want a 90 degree angle at your knee, and a 90 degree angle between the two thighs. Now. External rotation of this right hip, this front hip, is often going to be limited by how much I can uh, abduct this leg. Um, and are there theoretically limits, like mechanical limits, perhaps? Um, but what's interesting is it's the, the, the rotational torque that you feel on this front leg will only be a result of how much you can move your hips down to, to get down to the floor. So, for those of you guys who feel like you have pretty good external rotation 
uh, in 90-90, what I want you to try today is sticking a block under your ankle, all right? So in theory, if I was gonna do that, I should be able to lift my foot up high enough to slide a block under there. If you can't, then you don't need the block, all right? Um, now, when you do this, you still wanna keep that right knee on the floor, okay? So what we're doing is adding a ton, I mean, it's a decent amount, it's like 10 degrees, of external rotation at the right hip, all right? So this is a way of increasing the challenge of, of this drill. Now, if you struggle with 90-90, stick that block under your hip uh, so that you can sit up a little higher. That will decrease external rotation. Uh, you could always stick a block under your knee as well. Um, you may need to stick a block under this knee to kind of open up some of that internal rotation and, and, and make it a little easier on the backside. And you can always collapse the leg, okay? So those are different ways to get into this setup position. But now let's focus on our stretch, okay? So we wanna stretch in the back of the right hip. Here's how we get it. We're going to lift our chest up high and reach it out over the right knee. <clears throat> you want to keep a straight back here. So it's not about getting as far down over that leg as you can. As, as you notice, I can get here if I, uh, if I just bend my back a, a, a lot, right? And, and that doesn't really mean anything uh, in terms of training this hip. So instead, lift that chest up high, reach it out over the knee, keep reaching your chest forward and further out, and that's gonna get you a stretch in the back of the right hip, okay? Now from here, we're going to do Pale's Rails work. So let's get a few deep breaths, maybe like five deep breaths. I'm actually gonna open my angle more. Whew, brutal. Now let's begin. Again, try to keep the right knee in contact with the ground. If you need to, you can press down on it uh, just to, to create a little bit of assistance there. And let's begin contractions. So we want to drive the right foot into the ground as if we're trying to swing it underneath the knee, okay? When you do that, you should feel a bunch of stuff on the outside of the hip trying to drive it into the ground, okay? So here we go, deep breath in, and begin pushing that right ankle into the floor. 10% effort, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, safest, greatest effort, and push for 10. Three, two, one. Now try to pull it off that block, and as you do, reach your chest further out over the knee. Five, four, three, two, one. Whew. Whew. Having trouble with this arm over here. A lot of, a lot of work holding myself up. <laughs> okay, next set, when you're ready, Drive that right ankle down into the ground. Safest, greatest effort for 10. You can grab the foot if you want so you have something to work against. Three, two, one. Press on the foot and pull that foot into your hand. Five, four, three, two, one. And we'll do one final set here. Lift that chest up high, reach it out over that knee, and here we go, driving into the block or into the ground. Safest, greatest effort for 10. Three, two, one. Press into the foot and pull the foot against your hand. Five, four, three, two, one, and relax. 
Now, what we want to do, at least for those of you guys who tried the block, but regardless, the principle still applies here. We want to try to build some control over this position, okay? So here's what we're going to do. We're going to do passive range holds. We've done these before in 9090. Uh, they can be pretty tough. What you're going to do is you're going to come into your stretch. You're going to squeeze your thigh and your calf towards your chest as if you are trying to bring them closer together. Then you're going to shift your weight back until that foot comes up off of either the ground or the block, okay? Now that might be pretty far back, but that's that first spot where you actually have full control over the leg and, and we just need to disconnect from that surface, okay? So, um, you know, it's not about, it's hard for me to see the camera here, but it's not about getting really far back and then being able to lift your leg repeatedly. No, nobody cares about that because that's just the workable range. What we're trying to do is figure out where's the spot where you can't work and you can't express your strength and then we train right around that, that edge, okay? So uh, here's what you're going to do. Just like before, lift your chest up, come out over that knee, get a big stretch, squeeze calf and thigh towards your chest as if you're trying to, uh, to close this gap, okay? Start shifting your weight back until that foot comes up. Hold. Let's get five of these guys. Here we go. Two more. Getting weaker. One more. All right. Now, uh, go ahead and pull yourself, if you're on this block, out of that setup. 90-90 uh, can sometimes be tough on your back just because there's a little bit of lateral flexion here. Uh, you know, if I was perfectly aligned with my hips, I'm probably over here. And uh, again, you know, when you're sitting up straight like this, there's gonna be a little bit of lateral flexion. So let's go ahead and switch to the other side. Let's talk about how to do this transition, okay? So um, you can keep your hands behind you if you need to. Otherwise, uh, you can squeeze them together or, or like press them together. What you're going to do is lift this left knee up off the ground Go as high as you can until you get stuck. Then you need to swing that heel out and under, open a little further. Once you can't go any further, then bring the right knee up. And if you find yourself in this middle position and you've done kin stretch with us for a while, you know that it's uh, roughly the bear sit position. From here, now we take this knee down and settle the left, my block is in the way, and you'll be in roughly 90-90 on the other side, all right? So uh, begin getting your setup, same thing as before. Whew, that first set was tough. Um, I am going to probably use this block again. I know this side's not as good, but it looks like I should be able to get that block under there. Again, I'm putting this block under my ankle to give myself a, uh, a greater external rotation challenge. So I'm trying to make it harder. Um, you don't necessarily have to do that, okay? It has not been that fun anyway, so I wouldn't recommend it. Okay, this side. It's going to be a little harder to get this stretch. There we go. All right, so to find the stretch on the back of the left hip, lift your chest 
up, reach out over that left knee. Something is not where I want it to be. I think that block is like just a little bit too high, but that's okay. We'll work with it. Maybe coming back a little. There we go. That's better. All right. So from here, chest is up, reaching out over that leg. A couple deep breaths. When you're ready, let's drive left ankle into the ground. You can grab onto that foot and try to pull it up. Uh, when you pull on it, that's going to give you resistance to work against. All right, so here we go. Start driving that left foot into the ground. 20% effort, 30%, 40, 50, 60, 70. 80, 90, safest, greatest effort for 10. Three, two, one. Place your hand on top and pull that ankle against your hand. Reach further out with your chest. Four, three, two, one. Second set. Drive ankle into the ground. Safest, greatest effort for 10. Three, two, one. Hand on top. Push that foot into your hand. Five, three, two, one. Final set. Man, this side is so much less mobile. And here we go. Drive foot into the floor. Safest, greatest effort for 10. And pull that foot up into your hand. Four, three, two, one. Ooh. Yeah, this side's way harder. <clears throat> I need like a half yoga block, which I think actually does exist. Um, but that's like overcomplicating things. Okay, so from here, uh, same thing as before, passive range hold. We're going to go into that place where you feel the stretch, stretch should be in the back of the left hip. Then you're gonna squeeze all of this stuff towards you and shift your weight back until you reach the point that you can lift. Ugh, not too great on this side. <laughs> Fine passive range, squeeze, try to bring it with you. Squeeze. Two to go. Really tough here. One more. tough um, but awesome practice now let's do what we did before hopefully I'll be able to reach all of the various shit in terms of props that I have here um, but let's do what we did before with the transfer okay so if you need to you can have hands back behind you um, or if you want more of a challenge you can have hands up and press them together Either way, your legs and your hips are gonna do the same thing, okay? So we're gonna move from 90-90 to uh, roughly bear sit, and then we'll move from bear sit into a straddle position, all right? If you could do all of this without using your hands, then you have a, a pretty good uh, amount of control 
over your hips. All right, so here we go. Hands are pressing together if you want the extra challenge. That block probably needs to go back there. And let's begin. So right knee is gonna open. That hip is starting to externally rotate. Once you run out of room, swing the heel under. Keep opening as much as you can until you get stuck. Once you get stuck, bring that left knee off of the ground. From here, you are roughly in that bear sit position, all right? Maybe you need to adjust a few things here and there, but you'll probably be pretty close. Now for straddle, simple enough, lift the left leg and straighten it open out as far as you can. I won't have much here, okay? So uh, no, no judgments, please. And uh, same thing for the right. Lift that right leg and straighten out into straddle, okay? Now, I like towels here because uh, the kettlebells hurt my weak little ankles. Uh, and this is also a place where if you have the sliders or if you're on a yoga mat and this is hardwood floor, uh, towels will work as well, all right? So I'm gonna do two things here. I'm gonna lift up my foot and get this slider underneath it which is going to allow me some movement across the floor. Um, and I'm also gonna get my bells nearby. All right, now, you, one of the ways you could set straddle up without any of the stuff that I'm doing uh, in order to remain looking at the camera with you guys, you could sit against a wall, okay? And, and your feet are just gonna go as wide as you can get um, with the wall in front of you. And then you can place the phone right there and, uh, and you'll be able to do this, all right? For me, I'm trying to face you guys and make sure I'm facing the camera so I can't really get up close to the wall so I have to use kettlebells, all right? Now, again, I use the towel just to create a little bit of a cushion against the bell here because it can be uh, a little painful once you start pushing into it, all right? Um, but now I'm essentially fixed in this position, okay? My legs can't really go anywhere, and I also can't open them back up any further. Um, so we're just going to hang here, just like we talked about before. Try to imagine a string lifting you up through the center of your head. If you need to, you can put your arms back behind you, but try not to move your butt too much, okay? because as you do, you'll decrease this angle um, or increase it depending on if you're moving forward or backward, all right? So if I pick my butt up and move a little further forward, I'm now in a deeper straddle than before. And we're gonna use that uh, in, in just a moment as we begin Pales Rails contractions from here. Now, uh, I, I had mentioned this to a student in, in check-in forms this week. Um, but right now, your hip abductors, so all the stuff on the outside of your thigh and, and down the, uh, the line to your foot is short, meaning that it's not being stretched and instead it is in the, the regressive angle um, of the hip, okay? So in this position, the progressive angle is here, essentially from the, the crotch to the leg, that's the angle that's getting bigger as we continue to move. Uh, and the angle that's getting smaller is the outside. So on these rails contractions, you're gonna be training things like uh, musculature that connects to the IT band in a short position, a non-stretched position, okay? Um, so that's really important for understanding what might be targeted here in the stretch. Um, so we've been sitting for a little while Let's begin our first set of Pales Rails contractions. Now, just wanna work on a couple things with you guys. Let's try to lock, not lock, but straighten the knees. And let's get your toes pointed up or even slightly back, which would be external rotation at the hip. And then we can begin, okay? So, Pales contraction. Try to squeeze your feet together. Let's begin at 20% effort, 30, 40. I'm gonna need bigger bells. 50, 60, 70, 80, 
90 safest greatest effort for 10. Three, two, one. Try to spread your feet apart. Now, you have two options. Think about pulling them away from the bells and you can also lift your butt up and scoot yourself further forward into a deeper stretch, all right? So a couple different options here. Should be a new stretch, deeper range. When you're ready, same thing. Drive those legs towards each other. Safest, greatest effort for 10. Should feel major groin muscles training here. Three, two, one. And try to pull the legs apart. See if you can get them away from the kettlebells. You can also oh, scoot your butt forward and get a deeper stretch. Now, I'm gonna try, I don't know if it'll go so well, but I'm gonna try to do this hands-free on the next one. So uh, what you could do here is push your hands together, you can push your knuckles together, you can squeeze like the palms together, all that stuff works, okay? So uh, if you feel like you want a challenge by going hands-free, this is how you would do it, all right? So deep breath in, squeeze the legs together, safest, greatest effort. Three, two, one, try to pull apart. Think about squeezing this uh, outside of the hip here. Three, two, one, and relax. Now, don't come out of this position just yet. Whew. Take your time, can be really intense on the knees. Now, what I want you to do, if you're using weights like me, is just bring those weights in slowly because I want to uh, do a couple sets of passive range liftoffs. So you're just gonna bring them in nice and easy. You're taking some pressure off. Whew, that was really intense. If you're not using this, you would scoot further back from the wall or, or further back from whatever object you're using to spread your legs out. Now, passive range liftoffs, you're going to slide your uh, foot or your leg away from whatever this target is. So if it's the wall, you slide away from the wall. Uh, if it's the, the kettlebell, you're sliding away from the kettlebell or the weight, okay? So same thing as before. Imagine that string in the top of your head. We're gonna do one side at a time here uh, so I can see <laughs> how this works for me first. Uh, so when you're ready, five liftoffs. Try to slide that limb away. Let's start with the right. One. You guys might not even be able to see that. Two. Three. Four. Five. And the other side. One, you can see how very little my foot is moving. Three, four, five. All right, now the tough part, let's see if we can do both together, which I, I may not be able to do, I just wanted to try it with you guys. Um, I highly doubt I'll be able to do it hands-free. So let's give it a shot, we'll do five both legs at the same time. Really important that you learn uh, in drills like this to create total body tension. So you wanna be squeezing the muscles in your legs. Um, I think actually, if we were doing this more traditionally in gymnastics or ballet, you would be pointing your toes to create tension in the calf and the foot, um, but also like pressing down into the floor, squeezing your abs, so on and so forth, okay? So here we go, deep breath in tension and pull the legs away. Yeah, I'm moving like literally half an inch. And there 
you have it, all right? So what I encourage you to do is to finish the training in straddle. So we're gonna move to fingers, um, a little bit of wrists and, and, and elbows, um, but I encourage you to finish this in straddle. If you need to, you can get uh, back into more of a, a stretched position um, in order to continue to get some benefit from this, okay? The, the hardest thing ugh, about stretching in, in kin stretch is to really get a change and whatever kind of change that is, physical, neurological, muscular, whatever, um, in order to elicit a change from a stretch alone, that stretch may need to be held for at least two minutes, uh, but most beneficially, probably like seven to 10 minutes, maybe even as long as 14, okay? Now, we don't necessarily always have time to stretch that long, um, but in this case, we can sit here and, and uh, benefit from this while we do some extra work, okay? So, you need a yoga block, uh, and you need your skinny dowel. So hopefully they're somewhere nearby. Uh, or not your skinny dowel, but your short dowel. Um, we'll use the dowel in a little bit, all right? Let's talk about training the fingers first. So you need the yoga block, and this stuff's pretty easy. You're going to take the yoga block, place it on your fingers, all right? So right above these knuckles uh, at the top of your palm, place your fingers on the block, take the block in towards your chest, and now bring your wrist and your hand out and up to the side, okay? So I'll, I'll see, I don't know if you guys will be able to see this, but I, I'll try to demo from the side, but essentially what should happen, if you look at the block and you look at this hand, okay? This is my working hand, Everything is in line, fingers, wrist, and elbow. Take your elbow out to the side, take your wrist out to the side. And the further you go, the more you'll notice uh, that now you still have elbow and wrist in line and the hand, but then the fingers are being pulled back like this, okay? So if you can, your objective is to get all those fingers pulled back as far as is, uh, is comfortable for you, okay? It's about your passive range. So, uh, I wish I could show you guys better. I don't know if you can see that. Um, but anyway, hopefully you'll figure it out. It's not about bending the wrist back. It's about bending the fingers back, okay? So, just let this stretch out your fingers. If you are having trouble with this, for the record, you can um, kind of stick the block against your leg place your fingers on the ground and just try to get as deep of an angle. This is going to be disgusting when you guys see this up close, but um, you can see like there's a really deep 90 degree, nearly 90 degree angle. My palm is like flat against the yoga block, but my fingers are, are trying to be flat against the floor. Okay. So any of these um, positions will work. The key is to get those fingers bent back. Okay. So, um, just relax. Let that stretch happen on the fingers. We're going to do both hands here. All right, let's begin Pales Rails contractions for the fingers, which you have never done before and is going to be extremely challenging. When you are ready, Start pressing your fingertips into the block, but don't let the block move and don't let your hand move, all right? Press the fingertips into the block, 20%, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, safest, greatest effort for 10. You might see the middle knuckle crimp up, that's okay. We actually want that. Five, four, three, two, one, try to straighten out the fingers. Think about reaching your fingertips away from your hand. Five, four, three, two, one. Press into the block again. Safest, greatest effort for 10. Three, two, one. And again, think about lengthening those fingertips 
it's almost like you're trying to lift them off that block. Should feel top of the hand or back of the hand burning. Three, two, one. Take a little break if you need to. Stretch it out. We're going to get one more. Uh, I want to demo maybe from another position so that you guys can see uh, what's happening here. What would be the best way to do this? I'm going to lay this block flat. All right, now here's my hand. My hand is going to go up, but my fingers are staying flat, okay? So I've got them in that same position. And now let's press fingertips down into the block. Safest, greatest effort for 10. Four, three, two, one, and try to straighten those fingers. Three, two, one. All right, now hold that stretch position. We're gonna do passive range holds for finger extension, all right? Like I said, very challenging, not very fun. Um, I'm gonna bring it back to uh, my chest because for me, I felt like that was the most effective position. So what you wanna do, get that bend in the fingertips and then gradually pull your hand away, but try to keep the fingers at that, uh, that pulled back angle, okay? So I'll demo like this so you can sort of see. Uh, here's how it works, all right? You're watching this hand over here. All right, let's see, there we go. Okay, so here's what happens. I'm gonna pull my hand away, but I'm still trying to keep my fingers straight. The moment that middle finger leaves the block, that's your passive range hold. Keep them all as straight as possible, okay? Here we go, pulling hand away. Right there is where I hold, got it? So you could practice this from any position. I'm gonna do it down here. You can also pull the block away so that your hand sort of stays right where it is. All right, let's get five. This is my fourth one. Last one. Ah. All right, now, really important part, finger cars to drive this home and to, to try to save the work that we've done, okay? So take your block, tall orientation on the block. Can you believe that you have been sitting in straddle this whole time too? Um, which we'll address in just a second. Finger cars. Fingers are hanging over the edge. Spread the hand out wide. Make big circles with your index finger. Four, five. Reverse. Three, four, five. Middle finger. One, two, three, four. Big circles. Five. Reverse. One, two, three, four, five. Next one. One. Two, three, four, five. Reverse. Three, four, five. You can do the pinky, um, although I find that the pinky, like the thumb, needs to be trained on its own. Uh, these three guys kind of all run together. Now, last piece, what you're going to do is bend the fingers. Try to bend from the outermost knuckle first, in, and then all the way down towards the block, and then back out. All right, I'll demo from the side so you can see. And back out. One more. <sighs> All right, left hand, same thing. Find the position that uh, feels like it works best for you. I'm just gonna adjust my straddle, see if I can actually get any more out of it. I don't know if I'll be able to, but we'll try. Oh. <coughs> okay, there we go. So left fingers, actually that was, that was really aggressive. Whew. Okay, left fingers, bend them back with the block. You can even drop your pinky off, like let it hang uh, how do I, there we go. Let it hang down under the block with your thumb. Uh, Cause really here, we're just trying to train these bigger, bigger fingers. Uh, so again, I, I like to set it up on my stomach or on my, my chest. 
Uh, fingers are bent back, little stretch, couple breaths. And when you're ready, press fingers, press fingertips into the block. Safest, greatest effort for 10. Two, one, try to straighten them out as if you're lifting fingertips. Three, two, one, and press fingertips into the block. Safest, greatest effort for 10. Three, two, one. Try to lift the fingertips off. Should feel back of the hand burning. Three, two, one. And final set, drive fingertips into that block. Four, three, two, one. And lift them off. Three, two, one. Now, passive range lift off or sorry, passive range hold. Um, I'm gonna demo like this because I think it actually might make more sense this way. Bend the fingers back as far as you can. Try to straighten them out. Imagine lifting off the block and then take the block away. Once that middle finger leaves, hold. Four, three, two, one. You wanna have a, a straight wrist here. We're not training uh, the wrist extension version of this, okay? So same thing, press those fingers back straighten them out, pull the block away and hold. Two, one. Now just watch this, okay? Here's the passive range for all these fingers, all right? That's like almost 90 degrees, maybe like 80. Here's the active range. It's down near like 45, okay? So if, if you're having trouble with the kettlebells or you're having trouble with climbing or something, um, maybe it's because you have no finger extension strength. Four, three, two, one. Let's get one more. Press the fingers back. Imagine lifting them off the block and then take the block away. Three, two, one, and relax. Final set, finger cars. On the left, I don't think we're gonna have time for the elbow, so. We'll just finish with these, uh, this hand and these fingers. Index finger, four, five, circles the other way. Now, as we do this, you're probably gonna move lots of other fingers at the same time. Don't worry about that right now. Five, four, five, reverse. Four, five, straddle is just killing me, man. Got to hang in there. Ring finger. Five, reverse. Four, five, pinky. Four, five, reverse. Four, five. And now, just like we did before, uh, bend the fingers all the way in make a fist essentially, and then start to extend them out one knuckle at a time. Two, three, four, oh man, and five. All right, awesome. Um, so today you should have gotten a really long stretch in straddle. Uh, some great hip external rotation work, as well as uh, fingers. Now, just real quick, this is not just training the joints of the fingers, but also in the hand and all the way into your forearm, okay? All you have to do to feel that is move your fingers around and you can see the tissue uh, that's controlling that. So major benefits for the hand, the wrist, and the elbows. Um, thanks so much guys for tuning in. I look forward to teaching you some of the elbow stuff we've been working on and uh, don't forget to let your friends know that if they sign up for our mailing list and follow us on Instagram, they have a chance to win a free kettlebell. We'll be giving away a kettlebell every month for the foreseeable future. So make sure that either you're on the mailing list or they are on so that they can be a part of it and have a chance to win. 
All right. Thanks very much. And uh, we'll see you next time.